Hi, this is Pastor Burt, New Northside Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, we are welcoming you today to join us as we continue our series on pandemic survival. So relax, get ready to praise as we hear from our praise team.
Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to New Northside Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, we are so grateful to be in the presence of the Lord, and we're so grateful for the praise team to usher in the Spirit of God with the praise. So today we're going to continue our pandemic survival series. We're going to be talking about how the king expects faith, part one. The king expects faith, part one. So I greet you all today, and let's go before the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, that you would be present right now in the form of the Holy Spirit, and you would bless now this time of uh, preaching and teaching. Uh, dear Lord, uh, help your servant to be of some use. Uh, bless us now in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I would like to draw your attention to this passage of Scripture in Mark, the ninth chapter, verses 14 through 27, reading from the New King James this way. And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. And immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed. And running to him, greeted him, and he asked the scribes, what are you disputing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought my son who has a mute spirit, and whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, he foams at the mouth, he gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. They then brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell to the ground, and he wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cry out and say with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying that deaf and dumb spirit, I command you to come out of him and return no more. Then the spirit cried out and convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And he became as one dead. So the many said, he is dead. And Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. So what we see from this passage of Scripture is this. Jesus expects faith. Faith from the people of God. Jesus witnessed a very sad scene from the people whom God had revealed himself. God had revealed himself to the very people that God was speaking to, to the Jewish people. He revealed himself by a covenant, a covenant that God made with Abraham. We see from the text that Jesus expects faith. Faith from the people of faith. At the scene where Jesus was, Jesus witnessed a crowd of his own countrymen, his own kinsmen, people who are Jewish, a special people whom, through Abraham, God had revealed himself with a covenant. Now all the covenant is a divine deal in that case. Furthermore, God had revealed himself through deliverance from slavery. God had revealed himself through signs, miracles, and wonders. God had revealed himself through the law of Moses. God had revealed himself through judges and through kings and through prophets. God had revealed himself in a personal way. And now Jesus comes on the scene and the very people who 
kept the law, who understood the law, who were experts in the law, they were critical, they were skeptical of him. And they were swaying uh, 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 the crowd, and they were constantly saying, you can't trust who Jesus is. He's not who he says he is. And then furthermore, it's a sad scene because Jesus' own disciples who were up on the Mount of Transfiguration just a little bit earlier in Mark, they saw God affirm that Jesus was who he said he was. They saw that. But then they didn't have enough faith to cast this evil spirit out of this man's chair. And furthermore, as we hear from the man's own admission, he was struggling with faith. And so that's why we hear the express exasperation in Jesus' own voice when he says in Mark 9 and 19, he calls them faithless. Y'all are doubting. You're fickle. You're unreliable. You're unbelieving. You're skeptical. And you know what? We see the same thing right now. We have heavy skepticism about faith. Guess what? There's little doubt. There's little discussion on other big assertions, folks got faith in political opinions. People got faith in economic activity. They got faith in science or faith in ignoring science. But guess what? Jesus expects faith from the people of faith. I want to let you all in on one of the greatest statements of divine expectation in the Bible. It's right here in Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The beauty of God is that God is more of rewards than of punishment. People who don't believe God, who, who want to criticize God, they'll try to highlight the negative stuff in the Bible or the punishments. But it's clear about God from the Old Testament that he rewards those who are faithful. He rewards the faithful with, guess what, relationship. One of the greatest psalms in the Bible, the 23rd Psalm, illustrates this. I don't know if you heard it. It goes like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside still waters. Now, some folks may be saying, huh, how is that possible? We got folks living in poverty and in, with disparities. That just can't be right. But guess what, friends? God can change our natural circumstances, but the greatest demonstration of the power of God is how he changes our spiritual, our soul circumstances. See, that's the truest and greatest, most lasting change. And it's also the greatest reward to faith is by changing your heart and mind to be able to, to deal with any circumstance. What am I talking about? It's right here in John 14 and 27. Peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. See, what Jesus is saying is, the peace that he is going to give is going to be a peace on the inside that will allow you to deal with chaos on the outside, uncertainty on the outside, fear on the outside, terror on the outside. The peace that Jesus gives, guess what? The world can't contemplate that peace. They can't comprehend it, and they cannot sell it. And that peace is a reward for your faith. Here's the other thing. Here's the other thing, friends. You will be able to lie down in green pastures and rest beside still waters, as the, the psalm goes on to say. And that's possible even when you're next to a barren plain and even when there's a raging river. And you say, well, how is that possible, Mr. Preacher? Well, I'll tell you. It's right here in Philippians 4.11. Not that I speak with regard to need, but I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. How is it possible to be content? How is it possible to be content if I just found out I had COVID-19? How is it possible to be content if my job just got taken away? How is it possible to be content if the landlord is asking for a rent 
if I find out this relationship is not what I thought it would be. If my family, whom I've been locked down with for weeks and weeks, seems like they turn on me, how is it possible to enjoy contentment? Why? Because through Christ, I can do all things. Through Christ, I can do all things, and Christ will strengthen me. That is a reward of faith. Mm. Psalm 23 goes on. He says, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, or yes, although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now listen, friends. We were walking through the valley of the shadow of death before COVID. 40,000 people a year killed on the highway. T thousands murdered. 500,000 people a year more dying of heart attacks. People, an epidemic of, of, of pedestrians being struck down and folks driving away. Over 90,000 people dying every year due to medical mistakes. We were already walking in the path of the, the valley of the shadow of death. COVID is just a new shadow on the block. COVID is just a new phase of it. But in faith, this declaration remains the same. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. The reward of faith is what God said to the children of Israel before they went into the promised land. And it's the same thing that the king says to us in the New Testament. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And you may say, well, how is that possible for me to enjoy this incredible reward? But you know what? Uh, uh, Jesus made it. Jesus explained how God made that possible. In John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's how he made it possible that whoever believes in him shall not perish. That's how he made it possible, but have everlasting life. See, there's the reward for faith. Faith is expected by God, but guess what? Faith comes with a reward by the king of glory, Jesus. Now, who by faith came down to earth like everybody else, like a baby, and by faith allowed himself to be killed by the unfaithful, and he died demonstrating faith. Let me say that again. Jesus died demonstrating faith, and God got him up alive and crowned him the king of all kings. And by faith, we are able to connect with him in that place. The king is the rewarder of faith now and forever. I'll say that again. The king is a rewarder of faith now and forever. And you say, you know what? I, I hear all that, but I'm having a tough problem with my faith right now. I'm having a tough problem, brother preacher, because they're talking about all the risk on the TV. I'm having a problem because people who look like me or ending up with the virus. I'm having a problem, brother preacher. I'm having a problem with y'all just talking about opening up the church. What did the Father say to Jesus in our text? The Father said immediately in Mark 9 and 24, he said immediately the father child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe Help my unbelief. Listen, we got to be real with this thing. And we got to say what the problem really is. And we got to cry out to him, help my unbelief. And you will see when the father cried out for help, Jesus helped him. He said, help my unbelief. And guess what? Jesus helped him. How did he help him? By delivering his son from the evil spirit. By showing him the power of of God right before his face by helping him with a problem that the rest of the world couldn't help him with. They couldn't help him. His son was being tormented by an evil spirit. He went to different people and the world couldn't help him but he brought him to King Jesus and Jesus was able to help him with his unbelief by delivering his son from that spirit. He gave him his son back 
better than he was. Jesus helped him with his unbelief right there. And guess what? He will help you with your unbelief right now if you ask him. But still, the king expects faith. And if you're having a faith problem, ask him to help you with your faith. And if you say you got faith, then you ought to be showing some signs. James 2 and 26 says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. So before you march back out the door and expect your faith in the president, your faith in social distancing, your faith in the N95 mask, your faith in the CDC, your faith in the barber, your faith in the nail tech, your faith in the beautician, your faith in your doctor's office, your faith in your favorite restaurant, your faith in the workplace, your faith in the golf pro, your faith in the bartender. I'm just keeping it real for some of y'all out there. You better check the status of your faith. And if you don't have any faith, you better get some. Because Jesus has got it. And if you got it, then Jesus can help you with it. He can make it better. So friends, I want to say to you, don't forget. The king expects faith. God expects faith from the people of faith. And if you're having a problem with it, take it to Jesus. He will help you. And if you've got faith, now's the time to be showing your faith. Now's the time to be expressing your faith. Now's the time to be demonstrating your faith. And you know what, friends? God will reward you because the scripture says he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek his faith.